1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda Convertible by Ravel Monogram. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another amazing review for 1971 and today we're going to be looking at the Plymouth Hemi <laughs> Convertible by Ravel Monogram. I've been having trouble saying that all day today. Anyway, this is another great model kit loaned to us from our friend James and it might be kind of similar to last week where we looked at the Hemi Cuda hardtop, but hey, if you can pardon that, whatever, it's another great review for the week. Anyway, if you love these amazing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click the notification bell down there so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. Now, these model kits, I must admit, are from my own collection or my friend's collection. They're letting us see it as a big chronicle to all things model cars. But if you want to check out our model cars for sale, don't forget to visit www.monster-hobbies.ca. We have a model car section that's huge. Anyway, also when you're there, check out our newsletter. Sign up for it so that you get great discounts throughout the year, like Christmas and whatnot, when I send flyers with discount codes in it. So without further ado, let's go down to our Plymouth showroom and see what's in the box. And now we roll the clock all the way back to 1971 as we check out this great 71 Plymouth Hemi Cuda Convertible by Ravel. And now we'll just take a look at the sides of the box. So right here, of course, we get all the info that we need about our great machine. Of course, our end picture. And then on this side, we get to check out that great 426 Hemi motor as well as the body and interior. So again, another great looking model kit. Something cool on the shelves. So we'll just take the lid off here, move that over to the side. Inside we have our instruction sheet and our decals in here. And then we've got our nice chrome right at the front. Those great Chrysler cylinder heads in there, our glass, only the front window. <laughs> then we've got our tires on this nice web here. A nice bag with all our white custom parts in there. I guess they're not custom, but our white components. And that's it. So I'll clear all this out of the way. Hopefully it'll Get back in focus, <laughs> clear all this out of the way, and we'll take a look at our instructions. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one, and I want to build it, and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh, man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below. To start off with, we have our instruction sheet, page one. Now, unlike other instruction sheets, there's no actual picture of the car on this one, but that's okay. There is a lot of write-up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand type this into our computer description down below for this video, so you guys could read that in your spare time. Then we'll just open this up here. It's another one of these booklet type instruction sheets. We've got our paint chart down here and then all that read before you begin stuff, which does anybody read that? If you read this before you begin, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so we'll just open this up here. We can see in this first panel here, the entire workings of our 426 Hemi motor. This is very similar to the uh, Hemi Cuda hardtop. So we've got our two engine halves going together with the transmission on the end. 
our cylinder heads and valve covers, and then our front of the motor with the fan, the fan belts, the alternator, and the engine cover. And then in D here, we have our two carburetors going onto our intake manifold with the distributor on the side, up front, and uh, molded in coil, I think this is here. And then our uh, front belt assembly will glue onto the block, right and left hand side exhaust manifolds. And then it shows the engine going in on the frame, the subframe here and the location of our headers down here. Next up we have our wheel assembly and this shows our Dodge Rally rim here and how to paint it. So all these little holes are semi-gloss black and the central here is aluminum. So my suggestion would be to paint this aluminum first and then put in the black here with their smaller brush. Now the outer wheel will pop into the tire and then the inner wheel will pop into the back. Uh, now one thing about this, if you want your wheels to turn properly, make sure that on the front and rear axles you scrape the seam lines really well on these pins here. Because once you push this ring into that pin, it will never come off again. So make sure this is all as nice as you can make it on those axle pins so that once this is pushed on, it will rotate nicely. Now our suspension here, we've got the front K member with the torsion bars and the springs and king pins and all that. Are, well, the springs are the torsion bars. <laughs> They're all molded as one piece, so this makes it nice and simple for the beginner modeler. Just pop that on, clean it up like I said, and then glue it to your chassis here. And then if we just push our instruction sheets up a bit. You see the rear axle is much the same. It's got the rear springs molded in place, the differential and the drive shaft all as one unit. So you just paint that, pop your wheels on, remember to scrape that, and then drop it onto your frame here, or your chassis. This is a unibody construction, so you got subframes and then the rocker panels, and there's a little subframe up front. The exhaust manifolds are molded into the body or the pan, pardon me. So you'll have to paint those before you drop this on, and that can be a little bit tricky, but the end result will look nice. Next up, we have the windshield and radiator assembly. So again, very simplistic. You'll have to paint the body first, and of course this back panel with your semi-gloss black. Uh, the windshield very simply just goes in here. You need to glue it on the sides, of course. And then our rear view mirror will go in the center. And then our radiator shroud, it's painted semi-gloss black. So on the inside here, this wall will be painted body color, and this will be painted flat black with your radiator and support. When you glue it on, on the other side, you want to paint it flat black all the way across, because that's the way that the real Chrysler's had it, or the Plymouth's, so that if you look through the grill, you wouldn't see the body color. Next up, for panel 5, we have our interior assembly. This one is nice because of the separate side door panels. It's still a, well, it's a pseudo tub, I guess. It's got the rear seat molded in place, but the left and right door panels pop in. And then we've got our dashboard here with the filler pieces. Our steering wheel going onto the dash. And then the dashboard and the floor shifter all glue into place. Now this is an improvement over the hardtop because you've got your separate interior here and it's not a full-on tub like in the hardtop. Step 5 continues our interior assembly with our bucket seats being glued together, the fronts and backs, and then both being glued into the interior bucket, which of course then ends up going inside the body here. Panel 6 shows our frame assembly, which is kind of odd that they call it that, but anyway, your um, convertible boot will glue into the back here, and then it says to clean out these two little holes, that would be for the spoiler, I suppose, and then we have our rear taillights gluing in place, the license plate, or sorry, the bumper and the rear pan getting glued together, 
This is much like the um, Hemi Cuda, the hardtop, where you've got the license plate kind of loops up and in and pops into that hole, and then the bumper and the rear pan will swing into place. And then here we've got our chassis, which they call the frame, popping into the body. You might need to uh, push these sides out a little bit to make it pop in, but it'll go in nice and clean. Panel 7 shows our front assembly with our headlight bezels and the headlights going in. Remember to get these going um, up and down instead of at a 45 degree angle. The little grills on the lights I'm talking about. And then these go into the back here. Got our driving lights and this is of course our front grill. And the front grill glues onto the body. And it's saying to paint these areas here semi-gloss black. Front bumper goes into place. And then in step eight, you get your engine compartment assembly with all these paint callouts here for underneath the hood. And then our water hose will glue on from the radiator into the front of the engine block. And now a lot of these things are like the uh, little cap on your radiator, which is silver. The battery, you're painting one wire red. The other one would be uh, semi-gloss black. Contacts are silver, the cells on top are green. Oh, it says here to paint the wire black. And then we've got our master cylinder, which glues in as well under the hood. Step nine is your final assembly. So here it's got the spoiler going into those holes. Now it says the spoiler is optional, which they didn't really say in the previous, I don't think. Uh, so remember if you don't want the spoiler don't drill out the holes because you'll have two holes sitting there with nothing going on and people will be saying hey is something supposed to go in there for the rest of its life so <laughs> anyway there's the mirrors which are going on the side with the chrome mirror going into the housing for both it says to paint your door latch silver and then if we move the panel up here you got your two-piece air scoop going on and then you pop in the hood and it's starting to say which decals to apply here. And speaking of decals, the final page in our instruction sheet, step 10, shows all our decal placement. Like the small script for our car here, going on the back panel. Uh, what do we got here? All the little paints, colors that you put on, different decals on the hood, and then, yeah are bits and pieces. You have the option to use the giant Hemi uh, decal on the side or just leave it off. There's a turn signals going on as well. And that completes our look at our instructions for our 71 CUDA. And now let's examine those white plastic parts. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood. And I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now! And here we have our wonderful body for our 71 Plymouth Cuda convertible. As you can see, it looks very nice. There's quite a bit of flash on it though, like around the wheel arch here off the back. There's a little bit up here, almost looks like a door lock button, <laughs> but it's not. Um, the Chrysler logo down near the bottom here on our rocker panels. The little Barracuda style vents going on here, like gills on a fish. There's the turn signal lights. You can either paint those or use the decal. And our door latch here. It is a simplistic kit, but it is pretty crisp. Headrests, of course, under there. you got to cut this bar out of here. 
there's some of the numbers under a few mold marks maybe not too bad here uh, yeah so our body on this side looks good across the back there's your CUDA little script molded in place again this portion would be painted a semi-gloss black on the real car looking at the top you got this nice little area in here as well there's uh, the battery all molded in place it's always nicer if this is separate but uh, it still doesn't look too bad windshield wiper bottle of course or maybe radiator overflow as well front end well, looks quite nice so overall even though there is some flash this still looks like a wonderful kit to build here we have two parts trees together just to make this review go a little quicker <laughs> All right, so we've got our chassis under here, and it's unibody construction, so we've got a front subframe, and then the rocker panels would connect here, and then our rear subframe. We've got the molded-in exhausts in here, as well as a gas tank. There's our radiator, our fan belt, our distributor, the inserts for the dashboard, our wheel backs, our front bucket seats, our rear bucket seats, the side mirrors, and the steering wheel. And over on this parts tree we have both our exhaust manifolds, the front engine cover, the intake uh, manifold, <laughs> our K-member front, our rear axle, our fan with the clutch on it, and our master cylinder. So let's just bring these up to the camera just for a better look. You can see the nice tuck and roll pattern on here. Looks pretty accurate. Underneath, you got some of the brake cables, which looks really good on that pan. The radiator, of course. Now let's just turn this over. You can see the nice detail on the radiator. A couple of mold marks in here, which, of course, you know, can sand out. Overall, I mean, there is a bit of flash. Yeah. But overall, this is really a nice sculpt for the vintage of it. Copyright Monogram Models, 1982. So this kit's been around for as long as the, the CUDA hardtop has been around. And then here's our uh, detail on those exhaust manifolds and, of course, our K-member. So again... No real major mold marks. One in the center here of our K-member. Might be a bit of a problem. Oh, some on the headers there. But overall, very nicely done, considering the vintage as well. So there we go. Let's take a look at the next pair of parts trees. These parts trees contain our engine block here, our cylinder heads, the front clip of the car, our dashboard, the rear roll pan, and our interior semi-tub, as well as the door side panels, our convertible boot, our uh, hood scoop here, shaker hood scoop, there's the spoiler, and our hood. So let's bring these components up into our camera again, just to get a better look. Beautiful detail on the seat there. Great floor pans, even has the floor mats. And then there's our pedals here, correct pedals for this is a standard transmission. There's our dashboard and the rear pan. Looking at that Hemi, looks pretty good, has all the frost plugs in the right places. And there's our front grille, as well as the valve covers, which are pretty basic actually. And then we'll bring this part in. You can see the great detail on the door panels. And what's nice, of course, about this is they can make an accurate-looking window crank. Then, of course, there's our rear boot, the convertible. And then our hood here with the hood pins. And a little flash on the front of the hood, which is easy to take off. Flipping underneath. A couple of mold marks there and there. Overall, though, yeah, there's mold marks. There's a sink mark in here. Some flash on these mold marks. 
on the bottom of our spoiler. The pins are molded in, which is nice. Shaker scoop, of course, has mold marks inside. So all this could be cleared out with that number 16 hobby blade. But overall, again, considering the vintage, this is a monogram kit. Also loaned to us from James, by the way. Thank you, James. Uh, but it will go together really nice and look good on your shelf. Next up, we have my favorite component of all time, which, of course, is the chrome parts tree. There's not too much going on with this one. Of course, this is a car from 1971, not 1951. However, we do get our nice chrome wheels here. The cylinder heads. Oh, oh man. Next up is my favorite part, the chrome, because in the future, everything is chrome. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of mileage out of that SpongeBob saying. <laughs> anyway, there's our front chrome wheels here, which are very nice, the rally wheels. Rally with an E at the end. Anyway, there's our, our uh, valve covers, the front signal lights, the rear lights here, which, of course, you can paint with Tamiya clear red or tester stoplight red. There's our alternator. Remember that those windings in there are also that red color. Our rear bumper and our front bumper with the little parking lights going on here. There's our bezels for our uh, headlights as well as our carburetors and our mirrors and the shifter here. There's a little bit of a warp in this so hopefully James that's not gonna mess up your chrome over here. However, let's uh, bring this up into the camera again. And you can see the nice detail in those wheels. Looks very good. Chrome, of course. Very nice. The chrome. Beautiful. <laughs> Sink marks. Not beautiful. Scrape them off. Paint this all flat black on it back here. So that if you look it up from underneath, it'll look correct. Uh, you won't see this big chrome bar. There's our tail lamps again, same thing, paint them black in the back. But, you know, not too bad. Couple of mold marks, you know the deal. <laughs> so there we go, that's our chrome for this model. And here we have our glass components as well as our tires. I thought I'd show these together because there's not really too much to this kit. Um, anyway, there's our front windshield and the windshield wipers are molded in place. So I do believe this lower portion you would paint with a flat black. And there's our little headlights which push in. Remember they do have a texture on there which needs to go uh, north and south, east and west, and not at a 45 degree angle. So be very careful with their alignment when you push them in. And then here we have this web with these tires on it. Uh, now I'll just move that to the side. Now these tires came out, originally they used to say... Goodyear Radial GTs, and they were the raised lighter tires, which came out in the late 70s. However, these ones seem to have that all removed on them, so that you could, you know, make these pass as um, Goodyear GT radials. Or sorry, uh, <laughs> Goodyear GT tires, which were by as belted. Um, but, you know, it, nothing is like the real thing, of course. So anyway, these tires are quite nice. Lots of um, mounting points. You need to cut these off, put them in some sort of spinner in your drill press and turn it on and hold your sandpaper to there just to get rid of that. I think I should make a video on how to do these tires, how to make them, you know, spin them, get the tread down. So we'll just move that off to the side for a moment. And there's our glass here. Now, unfortunately, this was not put in a bag. So there's a little scuff mark in there, James. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> a little bit of automotive polish should be able to remove it. Yeah, you can see a little bit of a line here on that windshield. So this portion down here would be flat black. These would probably be chrome. Or uh, paint them with your silver, I should say. So there's our glass and our tires. The final component of this kit, of course, is our decal sheet. We've got the nice hemi stripe here. This has cutouts for our door latch as well as our rear side marker. 
And we've got California Plates JGD568. We've got a bit of a wood grain decals here for our instrument panel as well as our console down here. And I guess these are also part of the console. Then we've got our side marker lights, our scripts, all the little underhood decals, and all that other great stuff. This course says Revell Monogram. Originally, this would be a monogram kit. But again, nice decals on here. Should look great on your model. And that completes our look at the Revell 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. And if you've built this model kit in the past, don't forget to share it over on our Facebook page following the link in the description below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this great video today where we got to look at the Revell Monogram 1971 Plymouth Cuda Convertible. Wasn't it an amazing kit? And again, thank you, James, for loaning this to us. And if you want to check out all our great model kits that are available on sale right now, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Also, sign up for our newsletter so that when there are some great coupons and discount codes, flyers, if you will, for your email, when I send those out, you get to benefit on the great discounts. And if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. And until next time, everybody, don't let the wind blow your hat off in your convertible.